Hello and welcome to my latest video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to paint one of the new uh, Stormcast Eternal models from the uh, Dominion Age of Sigma box that Games Workshop kindly sent me as a uh, early kind of review copy. Um, because this is a, a slightly longer process I'm going to be doing this in two parts. So this video I'm just going to look at the non-metallic gold uh, and then in the following video I'll show you how to paint the rest of it. I'm going to base it on this artwork so it'll be the same colour scheme um, I don't know who these, uh, what the, the colour scheme is, I don't know exactly what the model is called, I just know it's a Stormcast Eternal and this is what we're using as reference. Uh, so you can see the model's already primed black, uh, I've left the shield off, also the head isn't glued in so it's just uh, blue tacked in. And, and that will make it easier for me to paint in the second part of the video so I can pull it out and uh, you know paint the details a bit uh, more clearly. Uh, I am starting with an airbrush. Now this is purely optional. I've painted plenty of models with uh, in a non-metallic metal effect and I don't use an airbrush at all. Uh, this is just to speed up the process a little bit uh, and get some colour on there because uh, well one, I'm doing this as not really tabletop, it's probably a little bit higher standard. It's not something that you really want to paint the whole army like so it will take too long. Uh, it did take me a few hours to paint this model and even then I didn't quite finish off the back but um, you know it, it's close enough you can, you can see how the the whole thing will be done um, but as you can see so I'm just using some uh, Monfang Brown just to these are kind of like the bounce highlight so uh, they're going to be kind of a little bit richer and darker than the uh, the top-down highlights to start with, but they're going to be mostly painted over anyway. It just makes the whole process a little bit quicker. Uh, you can, if you want, try dry brushing it, although if you do do that, be careful because it'll build up kind of a layer. Uh, you know, if you're a little bit kind of sloppy with it, it can build up like a sort of a, a dusty kind of built-up paint layer. Uh, so you will want to use very thin layers if you do any kind of dry brushing. Uh, you could do kind of stippling as well. If you check out the videos that I did, for painting uh, an Imperial Fist or an Ultramarine. You can see like this big kind of chunky stippling style I do to quickly block in colours on the armour. Uh, you can do the same thing for this as well. Um, so you know you can get around uh, using uh, not using the airbrush uh, and indeed even if you don't want to do the stippling or anything like that you can just paint straight over the black uh, and if you, you know, check out my Patreon and uh, or my website I've got videos on there that show uh, how to paint non-metallic straight over black and you know the process is very very similar as I said this just speeds up the process a bit um, but on saying that it does actually take away some of the high contrast which is one of the things that is quite useful for um, you know really bright and shiny uh, non-metallics uh, you can you saw there as well that the the top down highlight that I painted on was with uh, XV88 uh, and that was coming from the top left. So the uh, the first uh, colour that I put on was Monfang Brown from the bottom right. So you saw I turned the model upside down, sprayed from the bottom upwards. And then the second highlight was XV88 from the top left. So painting downwards. So that gives, it should hopefully have, there'd be a slight sections on the model that are a little bit darker where the two paints haven't quite connected. Uh, but now we're just going to kind of block in some of the highlights. So to start with, I'm using uh, Zemesi Desert. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> yeah, Zemesi Desert. And uh, these sort of highlights, they don't have to be super neat. So one of the things that people uh, sometimes get wrong or you know they focus too much on for uh, non-metallic colors is that they try and get these really smooth, uh, slow transitions. You don't need to do that. You, in fact, if you do quicker transitions, it looks better. Now, you're going to definitely be able to see the brush marks in this. Uh, like I said, this isn't going to win you a Golden Demon or anything like that. It's not something that I'm going to spend hundreds of hours on. It's just, you know, a few hours. And you get something that it'll look pretty good. And it sells the non-metallic effect quite well. It's going to be high contrast. Uh, but, it, you know, as I said, it's not going to win you a, a many painting competitions. Uh, having said that, all the processes that I'm using uh, are still the same. Uh, you know, you just... If you want to paint it better, all you have to do is just take your time a bit more, uh, 
do neater marks, uh, you know, make sure that all the brush marks become sort of much more subtle because you can still have brush marks visible on, say, Golden Demon uh, competition pieces, but they have to be very sort of precise and uh, a bit subtle as well. You know, they have to kind of like be part of the texture of the model. But these these marks that I'm putting on, they're uh, so I'm following the uh, the highlights how the, the light hits them and it's not just edge highlights I mean there are edge highlights but most of the edge highlights that you'll see will be upwards facing ones so it'll be where the, the light naturally catches the upper edge anyway uh, sometimes you get lower edge highlights especially if they're very hard edges but a lot of the times if it's downwards facing then you're not going to put a highlight on it because that will then because you've highlighted the upwards raised edges it kind of emphasizes the direction of the light um, but you know, if you're a little bit unsure about where to paint some of the highlights on this, just hold it under a lamp. Now, obviously, that the light will move depending on how exactly you hold it. But this can be a, a bonus as well because you can pick exactly which parts look the best. Uh, you do want to try and make all the highlights on the model um, consistent. So, if you have, you know, you hold the light, the model under a light uh, in a specific angle, and you know, you quickly block in. The, where those highlights hit on the model um, but it will probably be a case that some parts of the model won't catch the light in the way that you want so you can always tweak it as you go along but you don't want to just be a slave to how you paint highlights based on how a, a lamp uh, hits a model now lots of people use the uh, the technique where you, you know you're holding the model under a lamp see how the light hits it it won't give you light volumes because uh, paint you know, primer, whatever you know you're using, uh, whatever state the model's in when you hold it under the lamp, has a different light volume to um, a metal surface. But it will tell you where the light hits. And as I said, you can always tweak those a little bit later uh, to make the the model look better. It's more important that the model looks better than uh, it's perfectly accurate for you know the light spots on the model. Uh, but you know just to get the uh, the position of the light it really helps um, because you'll see as what uh, for one thing how different areas on the model how much light hits it so it gives you a rough air, uh, idea for the light volumes even if they're not accurate uh, for a, kind of like a gold metal surface and when I say gold metal I mean the color it, it, I very much doubt that the armor is going to be made of gold uh, so you know it's like a golden color but if you get some reference for how uh, gold coloured metals reflect light in all sorts of environments and things like that as well uh, but it'll give you and also there's variations of polish on the material so sometimes it can be polished up to like a mirror finish other times it'll have like a brushed metal look to it as well so there's all sorts of different ways of painting the metallics the effect that I'm going for here is going to be more of a brushed metal look mainly because that's quicker and easier and having the sort of scratchy look on the surface you know, you know, it helps you get away with that look, um, so you can kind of be a bit more scrappy with it. Whereas if you want, say, a polished metal finish, then it has to be pristine, and that is definitely only something you really want to do if it's sort of uh, display level, competition level type stuff. Uh, but so I was talking about the light volumes, and they're the main thing that you have to get right for selling the non-metallic metal effect. And one of the things about light volumes uh, that people get consistently wrong when trying to paint non-metallics is the size of the light volumes. Now I've already mentioned getting some reference for it just to see how light hits uh, metal surfaces. Uh, you know Google's pretty good for these sort of things. It's, it's not too hard to go and find uh, references for, for materials. But when people normally paint uh, non-metallics if they're not really if they don't really understand what it is that they're looking at what they tend to do is try and paint it as well as they can and get a transition going from say white through browns and yellows and whatever uh, down to black and they've because they always hear high contrast makes non-metallics work which is true it does um, but the transition that they make is very smooth and even so it, there'll be the same amount of white as there is yellow as there is brown as there is you know whatever colors you're using up to black and it'd be a very smooth even transition now that isn't how a shiny metal surface looks. You don't get a very soft, even transition. In fact, if you do that, it suggests that the surface isn't shiny. 
when you look at a shiny surface what you'll find is that the bright highlights are quite hard quite bold uh, and it's like a big kind of opaque shiny highlight um, and when it moves off of the highlight and transitions into the midtones and the shadows the transition is very quick because what you what the uh, highlights represent are well obviously the light source and other reflections as well so you know you're reflecting other lights around you it could be anything but it's kind of like if you if it was a mirror that you were looking at and you had a light looking at the mirror the mirror is going to say it's a light bulb the mirror is going to reflect exactly the light bulb as the mirror gets kind of like dustier the reflection becomes softer and harder to see the outline of it and that's exactly the same thing that's happening on the armor so um, the the light is kind of like you know the more shiny that you want it the quicker the transition has to be for how shiny it is so if you wanted something that's really really soft and um, you know completely scratched dirty dusty uh, you know all sorts of imperfections on the surface then you can do the really soft slow transition however if you do do that then you don't want it to look like a perfectly smooth uh, you know with zero imperfections so no weathering or anything like that because it just looks weird it doesn't look like a metal surface uh, so if you, you know you're going to do those really soft long transitions you really have to weather it and show that it's a, a dirty or whatever surface it is uh, probably with you know, scratchy results on there as well so it could be like a brushed steel surface or whatever so but in this case it's kind of like um like i said it's the, the easiest way of doing uh, non-metallics quickly and effectively so it's using the scratchy sort of technique but it's still shiny enough that you get the the large blocks of highlights so the these highlights as i said they're big they're very opaque and the transition it starts at the very edge of those highlights so uh, and goes very quickly into the next color uh, so you, you don't get the, the very soft smooth transition hopefully that all makes sense i you know waffled on for a little bit there but um i mean hopefully what you can see in the video is good is showing you the same sort of thing uh it, remember it is zoomed in a bit so the some of these brush marks marks they look uh pretty awful at this stage as well but um as i said the uh, the process can be refined you just you do the same thing kind of like over and over and if you thin your paints more as well for the later stages you can kind of glaze over with more refined and smaller marks and it'll make it look much much neat neater as well uh one thing about this uh, model that comes in the uh, the Dominion box is that um, so they're all kind of like uh, easy to build or you know you can put all these models together without glue uh, I wouldn't recommend that I put this model together really quickly though so if you look on the shoulder pads you can see kind of like some messy connections and things like that uh, I really should have spent a bit more time cleaning it up they've whoever sculpted it they did a pretty good effort of sort of hiding the uh, the shoulder gaps as part of the shape of the armor so what you see uh, especially you know with the photo at the end of the video so you can see how I've painted all the different surfaces um, means that you know these sections are separated out and it, it's not such a big deal but I do think at this stage you know they, they look a bit awful I've got some glue that's kind of um, popped up from in the gaps and things I couldn't do my normal technique because there is a, a lip between the lower surface and the raised surface and uh, you know it just makes it a little bit awkward to uh, to glue together um, but I did find you know if you try and put it together without gluing it that actually the gaps pretty big so I ended up cutting off a lot of the tabs and then just pushing it and pushing it hard together has kind of melted some of the glue and you know a bit messy but <laughs> regardless um, looking at what I'm actually doing with the paint uh, so you can see there I've swapped between a few colors here uh, the colors that I have on the wet palette are Zemesi Desert in the uh, the top right then next to that uh, on the left is Ice Yellow from Vallejo 
uh, on the far left is Monfang Brown, uh, Games Workshop again. On the uh, bottom middle, that's Rhinox Hyde. Then in the bottom right, it's white. So I've used I use P3 Mora white. People always ask me why I use that. I just find it flows a little bit better. It, you know, you can use whatever white you like. It doesn't matter too much, really. It, I just found from testing a few different ones that it's my preferred white. But, you know, it, it's not a it's not a big deal. There's there's no sort of secret formula. Uh, white is always going to be a tricky color to work with just because of the uh, the larger pigment particles and things. Um, but so one of the reasons that I picked this model as well is uh, it's it's a squad of three, and this guy has some special details on his armor. So he has the lion head on his chest and on his knee. I thought those would be a bit more interesting to. Uh, uh, paint the details on in the, the non-metallic style. So you can see here that I'm doing the sort of the muzzle area on the line and the main thing that I want you to look at is the, kind of the secondary reflection. So if you look on kind of like that round shape next to the nose, on the top left part of it it's got a nice little highlight, sort of scratchy highlight area, but it, as you go down it goes darker so I put a little bit of Rhinox hide uh, in that kind of area and then at the bottom I transition down again and put um, some messy desert and a bit of Mornfang brown there as bounce uh, at the bottom. I've also put some ice yellow in there, but that it's not a great idea. The idea is that with these bounce highlights, that it shows it's a reflective surface and you kind of like reflecting some of the light from down below. So it'd be like bouncing off of the floor or could be off the back of a shield, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Uh, but it helps to sell the, the non metallic effect. Um, th the idea is that. With the bounce highlight, you don't go brighter than the primary highlight, so it doesn't interfere with it too much. You, well, you can see that little highlight that I've done at the very lower edge of the that face part. Um, it's a bit too bright, so it's kind of it's not too bad really, but it's just sort of distracting a bit. Uh, you will find by the photo at the end that I've glazed over that a bit and knocked it down. Um, with all these kind of highlights on this, it is very much a case of balance. Now the first highlights that you get down, uh, so like I've done on the, the chest, the, the face on the chest, things like that, uh, it's not worth spending too long on them because, to start with anyway, because as the model progresses you'll be, you'll be tweaking things and balancing it out all over because you really want the head and chest to be more focal points on the model and as it goes further down towards the feet it gets a little bit darker so that the lower model isn't fighting with the upper part for focal points and you know what you'll find is as you you paint more sections on it um, you'll be tweaking parts so that some are a little bit brighter and some are a little bit darker uh, and it's very hard to get this perfectly right to start with uh, so as I said you know don't spend too long on one area uh, because you'll probably just find that uh, you need to make adjustments to it later on on these little lightning bolt uh, sections on his uh, armor that I'm painting here. Uh, so one thing you're going to notice actually about a lot of the painting that I do on this is uh, again it's very rough, very sketchy uh, and I will blob some of the paint purposefully. So that little kind of blob in the crevice, the crease part of the uh, kind of like in the middle of the Z of the lightning, um, that when the, the model is kind of more complete will look like a bright highlight in that section uh, and because it kind of goes over the edges a bit, it sort of replicates the look of a glare. So you know when you look at a shiny piece of metal, it gets like a bit of a glare coming off it on the, the bright highlight parts. Uh, and this imitates that. And now the main part that I'm going to do with that is with white at the, uh, you know, later on. So you put these little white blobs on it, makes it look like glare. So it's tricking your eyes and it helps to sell the, uh, the metal effect. Uh, but, you know, these are all sort of little things that you can do on where being messy can actually sell the effect better than being super neat. Um, however, you have to be very careful again if you're going to do something like that uh, for a Golden Demon competition because they can be a little bit picky on the having like a very perfectly clean finish. Uh, it really depends on how well you do it. But you know, for something like this, this is good practice. You'll see how it works, and then you can kind of refine it a little bit and make it a bit better for again, you know, for those competition standard uh, pieces. Uh, for a lot of the edge highlights as well, when I put them on, you're going to notice I'm not going to do them super neat. They're going to be 
some in some cases the lines are going to be broken. Uh, these are all nice little marks when I, I do things like that. Uh, so you can see on the very top edge of the, the trim that was connected to that Z part, you'll see that um, that kind of like top highlight, it's not a smooth clean line, it, bro it breaks up a bit towards the top. That makes it look so there's sort of imperfections, so they can be dense or whatever on the edge of the armor. And that, then it looks like the light's catching these imperfections. So again, you're selling the, the non-metallic effect. An important part to remember as well in the, you know, the whole of the non-metallic element when you're painting something like this is that uh, in many cases, parts of the non-metallic armor that you paint won't look metallic uh, until the very end because they have to be seen in context for the rest of the model. Uh, because if you, say if you take a photo of something that's metallic, if it's catching the light, that's great. And you can easily tell it's a metal object, but sometimes metal objects, especially if they're a little bit dirty, if it, they're not catching the light correctly, they can look very flat and uninteresting. And it's the same for the painting. Like you can't make every single part of the model look perfectly shiny. It can, or it probably will be a case that it needs to be actually, some areas on it are dull and quite flat looking. And on their own, they'll look bad and wrong. But when it's taken as part of the whole model, it'll all work together. So there will be some areas on the model that are much, much easier to make look non-metallic. Uh, they're going to be the curved surfaces, the brightest, you know, the brightest parts on the model with these lovely curves and uh, nice details. It's way easy to make those look non-metallic, whereas some of the flat surfaces, you know, they're much harder to, to get that shine on because you don't have uh, anything to work with like a, a curved surface as you're going to see here so on the hip armor here this is kind of like the easiest part on the model to make it look non-metallic and if you look to how I'm applying it it's just using the tip of the brush using the messy desert putting these scratchy sort of lines on as I build them up uh, you know doing a few layers on top of each other they sort of blend together and then it, you get kind of like that sort of brushed metal look to them um, You've got to be aware though when you're doing this the paint consistency has to be uh, fairly thin it's around about one and a half parts water to one part paint um, if you go too thick what you're going to find is one your brush is going to wear out pretty quickly because of the extra you know the thickness of the paint if you haven't got it watered down and you're just using the tip of the brush the friction uh, that is kind of like amplified along with the, the thicker paint means the tip of your brush is going to wear off very very quickly so try and keep the paint a little bit thinner but also just using thinner paint will allow you to do a slightly thinner and more translucent marks which you can build up and they look more subtle um, but if yeah if you just look at the, the little marks that i'm making here as you keep building them up uh, Again, because I'm, they're scratchy and they're slightly opaque, I can build up the top part so it's a little bit brighter at the top. And then as it goes down further, it sort of softens down a little bit. Um, but it, like, if you get a little bit frustrated with some of these marks and you find you can't make the marks as smooth or neat as I'm doing, um, it's, it's not a big problem. You can fix it with glazing. Uh, I will be doing some glazing towards the very end of the video because I'm going to add a hint of colour with some Uriel Yellow. Now I do do it to the, the whole armour, I will just show you on one of the shoulder pads when I do it. Uh, but it is it is applied to the whole model and what it does is it um, kind of softens the transitions and makes everything look a bit smoother. If you want, uh, you can just, you know, once you've got all these highlights and shadows and reflections blocked in, uh, you can spend hours and hours if you want glazing over them and you'll get a very smooth finish uh, because you've got all the light volumes worked out you'll know exactly how it has to look and you just make it neater and with that smooth finish and you get some very subtle soft textures still showing through you'll have a really high quality uh, non-metallic effect at the end as I said this isn't I'm not going for a perfect uh, finish it's not for you know competition or anything like that it's just a quick piece to uh, show off basically to show off the model from uh, the Dominion box uh, as you can see now I'm just painting on some some of the black areas on the model this is quite uh, like a handy thing so you can see here uh, these all these black areas they're not going to be non-metallic gold so I've got the shoulders the hammer and the uh, kind of the, the plates on the uh, uh, sort of loincloth-y kind of area um, all those sort of things 
uh, painting them in black will make your highlights for, from the non-metallic uh, pop out a lot more because the contrast is a lot higher now so it's obviously it goes from black up to white uh, and I think you can, you'll see on the chest there how much uh, brighter those highlight lights look there uh, but before I did all that so I was talking about the highlights here on the this hip plate uh, I've, so all the work that I've done at the moment was using the messy desert but now I'm going up to ice yellow it's, a, it's exactly the same thing again uh, they're very simple marks really it's just a, a case of practice I think you can see as I go further down so you start at the top and you do all these little scratches and the further you go down there's less paint on the brush uh, it becomes a bit more sort of translucent and faded so uh, you get a like a stronger highlight towards the top uh, which kind of like helps with the, the shine effect as well you will see as it uh, as more of it gets completed the uh, the effect that I'm talking about um, but you know just building up these layers of all these little scratchy marks uh, it gives a very kind of interesting uh, and pretty natural looking uh, effect really and the thing is it's way way easier to do uh, it's quicker you don't have to get like so the thing is when you do a, a perfectly smooth transition it has to be perfect and that takes a long time uh, it's kind of unless you really enjoy doing these sort of laborious very slow processes uh, is, is boring um, whereas this you can as, as you see it's much much quicker kind of interesting you get to the fun part of the painting way quicker and then if you want you can still take it up to these very smooth surfaces at the end but at the same time you'll still have some very nice like even if you make them really really smooth with the glazing that I was talking about earlier you still get these very subtle sort of scratchy marks in there which I think just look more interesting But you can see for the, the highlights now so still just using ice yellow at the moment uh, but just taking the uh, the top shine if you notice the the highlight goes uh, it's in a line all the way up um, and it's consistent so try not to do it at a strange angle or anything like that again you know hold it under a lamp you'll see how the light hits the, the shape and then you adapt it a little bit so that um, it looks like a, a more metallic surface for example, if you if this wasn't a metallic surface and it was sort of like a softer material, you would have the, the highlight would be spread out much more, kind of like the whole area would be softer. It wouldn't be this sort of tighter line that you can see going straight down. It would be widened out, sort of softened, and it wouldn't be such a, a clear highlight. Whereas alternatively, if you wanted it to be more shiny, so like a mirror finish, then it would be like a very hard, very clean line and you probably paint in um, other reflective uh, surfaces so you'd be what well, in this case I guess you'd be painting a battlefield on it or something like that but um, you know having these sort of scratchy surfaces means you don't have to worry too much about what the reflections actually are if someone asks you can say it's, I'm still reflecting a battlefield it's just a bit fuzzy <laughs> you can see here um, you know painting in some edge highlights edge highlights are quite handy for non-metallic surfaces uh, edges and curves are the best things because you get that super high contrast right next to each other uh, it makes it much easier to sell those you know these shapes as metallic on the like you kind of put the, the little white dots the brightest highlight parts on well one on the rivets that's pretty easy to see uh, but don't do every single rivet white because obviously some are going to be in shadows and some are going to be in the bright highlights uh, rivets will catch the light more so regardless of the area they're in you can always paint them one shade lighter than whatever the surface is around them so they always stand out and they will catch light because they're sort of a very um, kind of extreme shape so the light is sort of refined into a very bright dot um, so, uh, so as I said they, they will stand out uh, but don't just paint everyone white because it kind of becomes a little bit overpowering and you know some of the ones in the very deeper recesses they wouldn't be kind of bright white highlights I think you can you kind of get the uh, the idea now uh, of how messy you can be with some of the, the brush marks that I'm doing now I mean again remember this is a zoomed in shot so the the marks look 
messier than they kind of are. Um, I think they're just messy enough that you you know you can see them in a sort of subtleish kind of way. The only area that I think at the moment needs uh, a bit more work just to blend it in a bit better are the highlights on the top of the lion's head. Um, just to talk about those a little bit more because they're quite important. If you look in the recess and the curve that goes right up to the neck guard, I've got some highlights in there in that recess. Lots of times people paint highlights and they only paint the highlight on the raised surface. But if you look uh, at how light works, it works in, you know, travels in a straight line, if there's a recess, especially like a curve or something, and it's in the line with the, high, with the light direction, that recess suddenly amplifies the light because it's a curve and it becomes a it's a highlight area just because it's in a recess it's still uh, catching the light in a direct line with the light source so it becomes a brighter light so if you see that little section there just under the neck guard that should be a highlight as I painted it um, but yeah that little area there I just I need to kind of neaten it up a little bit so uh, you know, it's kind of like a you know one of the focal points on the model. This section here, so I'm going back to the hip uh, armor again. Kind of it's sort of unfortunate how like I jump around the model a little bit, but um, hopefully you've been paying attention enough uh, to to follow what I'm doing. Um, so I'm painting in sort of a secondary reflection here. This is another area where people can struggle a bit because these secondary reflections are not something that you can do when you hold the model under a lamp. You get the primary light source because you've got one. You know, you have your lamp above you. You hold the model under there. You can see how, like that primary light source hits the model. Uh, and just as a little side thing here, I'm just using a bit of Rhinox hide. It's very watered down. Rhinox hide and Mornfang brown are excellent because they're very translucent, so you can do a lot of layering with them, and you know, with a very thin paint and they sort of blend in. But you can see how it's high contrast. Uh, but so you know, this secondary highlight. Um, this would be like another light source or just reflecting, it could be reflecting again anything, it really doesn't matter what the source is. Uh, the point is that it's there to fill the space. Now, because you could, if you just want, have one light source on the model, the top down light, uh, and it'll still look all right. But the problem is that, you know, then you're looking at it from just the front angle and there's that big kind of gap going off to the left there with no more reflections on it. So you just have to fill in these extra reflections. And really, as long as you don't make them too bright, you can put them anywhere. Uh, and they can be kind of a, sort of any shape as long as they follow the, the shape of the armor. Now, because if, again, looking at that hip armor, um, it's curved, it's cylindrical almost. Well, I mean, it is like if you took off the trim and carried it around, it would make a cylinder shape. So if you keep those, uh, the shapes uh, as they would naturally look on a cylinder, uh, you can paint as many of those lines in as you want, these little reflections. It will still look kind of interesting, um, but just don't make the highlights as bright as the primary light source. And as I said, you can put as many of those in as you want, and you can space them randomly. You see a bit here, actually, under this little bit underneath the shoulder pad, um, doing the same kind of thing. Uh, I mess it up a bit, but the, uh, the general idea is the same. So I'm paint painting in these little sort of messy uh, shapes, and again, it's uh, it works a bit better if they are messy. Um, so you know, you can see these. I'm doing sort of these little horizontal squiggles. Now, having uh, you know, making them messy again, it just gives that sort of brushed kind of look to it. Uh, I, sh I I probably put a bit too much paint on there because it's watered down. You have to be a bit careful with watered paint because it very easily um, sort of flows, turns into a glaze almost. Uh, so really what you need to do is take some of the paint off you know if you're working with a uh, very watered down paint and you want to do more precise work you have to use very small amounts of paint um, because otherwise you it turns into it like a glaze or a wash it floods the area uh, this is you know it, it just means that it'll take a lot a lot longer to, to do the marks but it will give you more control by putting less paint on there it's not going to flood around it'll dry quicker uh, so you can do these more uh, kind of precise marks and, and they will be translucent so you know the paint as I said the paint's thinner so as you can see here under this sort of 
under the shoulder pad. I'm painting these in. They look really bad, to be honest. Um, but as so, they don't really show up when you hold it under a lamp. But you can see there's an area there of armor. You need to paint something in. So you just paint these little random reflections in. Uh, they roughly sort of line up with the other highlights that I've put on the forearm. If you can keep, try and make uh, highlights line up a bit. Now it's not, it does, they don't have to line up perfectly. Uh, and people sometimes make this mistake as well, uh, because depending on how f far forward something is, how close it is to you or how far back, all sorts of things like that, they'll change the, uh, the highlight point, the reflection points, and how bright the light is and all sorts of things like that. Uh, so, you know, things can move around a bit. But if you keep it kind of roughly uh, lined up, it, it'll make more sense when you look at it. You can see on the, the lower edge there, I just put in these little white highlights. And again, I did them, they're quite broken up and quite blobby, so it's sort of replicating that, that glare look. Now I mentioned that I'm going to be glazing later on uh, and part of the reason for the glazing is uh, well one as I mentioned it you know neatens it up a little bit softens things blends things together uh, the other thing is to add some color in there uh, so you can get a bit of kind of yellowy color uh, so one of the reasons for using the messy desert is it's quite a yellow color uh, quite nice for the armor uh, I was thinking of going for a the armor being as bright and yellow as on the artwork that I showed you, but I'm not sure it would look as quite as effective as a, in a non-metallic state. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful sometimes about using artwork as reference because they can get away with things because because they have a whole <laughs> like image, so you can have things fading down into black at the bottom and it will kind of blend into the background uh, because they have backgrounds and things as part of the image whereas if you're painting a model you don't have that luxury so if you fade things down into black and don't paint anything there it just looks unfinished um, so you know you have to be a little bit careful when doing some of these things I and that art that I showed you had very uh, dark background around it so the yellow was very vibrant stood out a lot uh, and kind of it's, it's a very interesting look anyway uh, I, I just wasn't sure that having something quite that yellow would be so effective on this. Like you can make some really nice non-metallic uh, yellow, like sort of gold, really strong yellow gold colours. Uh, but I would, good. I just wanted something like it was a bit quicker and easier. Uh, so, but part of, as I said, so part of the reason for using the the uh, Zemesi uh, desert colour was because it is quite yellow. You know, lots of people use these sort of colours for non-metallic golds. Things like Baylor Brown is uh, another one that I uh, I use a lot. Um, Japanese Uniform from Vallejo. You know, all these, as I said, all these colours are very, very common uh, throughout the uh, the model painting world for painting non-metallic gold. Uh, and it, it's because they're yellow, basically. You know, they're, they're a form of yellow. But as you add the ice yellow, or if you don't have ice yellow, you can use dawn yellow, or if you don't have those, you can just take some white and add a bit of, <laughs> you know, uh, Zemesi Desert and uh, yellow to it. You can you know, mix the colours yourself, whatever. It, it doesn't matter. Just it's a very uh, sort of off white, very warm off white colour, ice yellow. Um, once you've applied that to the model and on these bright highlights, you're desaturating it because you're taking away the visible yellow color that you painted on with the Zemesi yellow um, the Zemesi desert and that's particularly going to happen on the brighter highlight area so on the chest area uh, it kind of you wipe out a lot of the the yellow I apologize for you know I wanted to show you painting the uh, the knee with the, the lion face on big um, not so much for the bright highlights on it. Like I think you've already got the idea for painting the highlights now. To be honest, like they're they're all over the model. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of emphasise the fact that on the knee, as we go, you know, down on the legs, uh, further down, you don't need to do quite as many highlights. You don't need to do them as bright. If you just do like a few sort of stronger highlights to get the high contrast shine effect. Whereas if you looked at the artwork again at the beginning, it didn't have those on so much. Uh, 
which makes it a bit harder to sell the non-metallic effect. But uh, regardless, the you know there's going to be like these little shiny points on the the knee and on the lower leg and on the feet and things. Uh, but you don't you know they're, they're a lot smaller. So when I've done this, if you can see enough of it behind the hammer, you'll see at the end anyway on on the finished photo. Um, you see the the lower leg will be much darker in general with just a few brighter highlight spots on it whereas if it, as you go further up the model and again looking at the line face on the chest you just see how bright it is because uh, there's highlights all over it um, and that will again it's helping with the focal points but you know I keep talking about the yellow no, I'll get back to it now so I was talking about the Zemesi desert and like so you're desaturating it as you apply these highlights uh, taking away the yellow and it just kind of it doesn't look colourful anymore. Uh, so at the end when I apply the, the glazes, I'm going to be using some Uriel Yellow to get the sort of the, the vibrant yellow colour back in there while still keeping the highlights. Uh, it, it's just like a, an easier way of doing it. As I said, the glazes sort of help to soften everything and blend everything together. Uh, now if you wanted, you can kind of you know you don't have to do the glazing obviously and if you're a bit more careful uh, you can still keep the yellow in the highlights but i find it's much easier to just go in really hard with the highlights to start with and then you can tweak all the colors later uh, it also allows you to add other color hints you can put osl on there really really easily if anything it works out easier to over highlight something so you do way too much highlighting and then you can knock it all back with glazing afterwards. Uh, it does take longer, but you get a, a much nicer finish and you have a lot more control. Uh, so, you know, if you wanted to have like a glowing hammer here and you wanted to have it like reflecting off the armor, just paint in all the highlights like this for a start. And then you can go in with glazes and things and just sort of put these very subtle lights in there. Um, because regardless of the hammer being a, a light source or not, it's not going to change the fact from the primary light source and how it hits things. So you can just go back in and add other uh, like, kind of like bounce highlights later on, you know, coming from OSL from... Uh, and by the way, if you wonder what OSL is, it's object source lighting. Uh, so I mentioned coming from the hammer, if you want to make the hammer glow and do like little refle reflections over there. Whatever you do, don't just use an airbrush and squirt a bright colour coming from the hammer. Um, the the way the paint will fall on the model, the light volumes are going to be wrong. Again, you're just spraying paint, you're not spraying light. Uh, so it'll cover everything evenly and it just it, it looks wrong. Now, you know, you could do it kind of bright enough if the, maybe if you airbrushed the hammer like a bright white and get some colour coming off onto the model. But, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, metal doesn't look like that. You would need to get the light volume lights uh, coming off so you, you'd need to paint sort of like the scratchy surfaces all over with the color coming from the hammer like you could use the airbrush I guess kind of like I did at the beginning to kind of like roughly get some highlight placement on there but you still have to do all the same work that I'm doing on the armor for the same reason if you see on the shin part uh, kind of like the ankle part I guess of uh, the armor here where I painted in that little highlight you can again see that it's in the recess so remember when I was talking about the the curve the recess at the top near the neck guard it's exactly the same sort of shape and you can see how it goes into a recess but you're painting a highlight in there uh, because that's how the light falls naturally so we're coming up to the the last part of the armor that I'm going to show you how to highlight and I thought it might be interesting just to show you the back of the shoulder pad because the shoulder pads are quite um, sort of big and sort of softer curved. So hopefully, after you see this one as well, you have now seen enough uh, detail for painting the non metallic yellow to be able to apply it to all the, the other surfaces on the model. Uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward again still, and it's the same technique where you hold it under a lamp just to see roughly how the light hits it, then you adapt that, you maybe check some reference just to see kind of the sort of look that you're going for uh, see how well you can match it if you look here on the uh, the curve of the shoulder pad I mean, you can look on the one to the left actually uh, as it's under the lamp you can see how in the recess there the light goes in there catches that kind of 
joint between the the neck guard and the the sort of round shape on the shoulder. So you can see how I've done the sort of hard line at that same connection. Now I'm doing the light coming from the top right. So um, I mean, kind of like the model's held at the right sort of angle for this. Uh, so if you just quickly painted in all of the little highlights that you can see, so you've got them on the elbows, on the trim, on the calves, back of the calves, all these sort of things, you can very quickly just block them in so you see uh, how they all work together. Um, but it means that you know to the left of the model it's going to be darker, and when you put those reflections in, don't go too high. So you're probably working more with the uh, Mornfang Brown, if anything. Um, but you're going to see a little bit of that on here. So I'm going to do a bounce highlight on the shoulder pad as well, uh, just to give you a rough idea. Uh, the most important thing probably to take from this is just looking how I use the tip of the brush for the shape of the marks that I'm putting down. Uh, and I think, uh, so if you go back and look at the the hip plate that I talked quite a bit about, if you look at the shape of the lines on there, so again, they're all these sort of random scratchy you know, shapes going all over that I'm putting down, but there is still very much a kind of horizontal line going down, so uh, following the shape of the highlight for the shape of the, the object. Whereas this, the highlight here, I'm doing kind of like a more swirly sort of pattern, which kind of follows the shape of the, the roundness of the shoulder pad more. Uh, now you might get tempted because you want to build up the opacity quicker to do bigger blobs of paint. Uh, it, it's kind of risky to do that. Um, if you're quick you can push the paint around a little bit. Uh, so what you should be able to see here is that uh, I'm just using, I was just using one colour there and it kind of like works as a highlight because using the, uh, the opacity of the paint. Uh, you know, see how it fades out more down towards the bottom. Don't spend too long on the Zemesi Desert stage because what you find is straight away here, going up to the ice yellow, it's a big jump in contrast, you know, brightness. Um, so you might get like a perfect finish with the Zemesi Desert, then you're going to work on top of it with the ice yellow and you're going to instantly ruin it uh, because you've got to do the same thing again the ultra refining and things like that just do that at the end if you want to like if you want to really push yourself on this that's when to do it when you've got all the highlights and shadows and things mapped out you just spend longer on it be neater take your time um, up to that stage really don't spend massive amounts of time on it because as i said when you know if you do the, the messy desert stage and you get a perfect finish and you go then to the ice yellow and you're just going to ruin it because you've got to do the same thing again and you probably won't even be able to see all the work that you put in with the a messy desert apart from at the very edges so you know um it, it takes long enough anyway doing this kind of painting so don't make it harder for yourself but again i'm doing exactly the same thing you can see the shape of the highlight it's round that's the sur that follows the shape of the surface that i'm working on uh, that's one of the, the important things to take from this as well. Uh, the shape of the highlights kind of match the shape of the surface. So again, look at, look at this shoulder pad, look at the shoulder pad on the other side. Uh, it's roughly a circle to a highlight on there anyway. Now again, remember that it's paint that you're looking at and not a metallic surface, so it's not quite as shiny as it, uh, a metallic surface would be. So you kind of had to adapt a little bit. But if you look, say, like on the left, hand side uh, elbow, see how that's a circular highlight. Then on the back uh, shoulder blade kind of armor, whatever it is, um, you, you know, it follows more kind of like at the edges a little bit. Uh, down by the calves on the back of the legs, again, uh, it's a very round highlight because the, the armor shape is round, but then it stops, it's like a half circle because it stops at the very edge and then the edge highlight would come in as a bright highlight. You know, it, it kind of it does help a lot with making uh, surfaces look non-metallic. Uh, it's just getting the shape of the highlights correct. So here I'm using Mornfang Brown. You haven't seen me use this too much, uh, so that's another reason why I thought I'd better show you. Uh, really, because it's a big surface area, the shoulder pad. So uh, with the bigger surface area, you just have to spend a little bit longer getting those colours and transitions in there. The smaller the surface, you don't have to worry quite so much because you just cover the area way quicker. Whereas this is larger, it allows you to see kind of some of the subtleties a bit more. Uh, you know, but it's again same process. So you know, I start off with the uh, the Mornfang Brown, then I'm up to the Messy Desert. Um, so this, this bottom highlight that I'm putting me putting in, this is a bounce highlight. This would be kind of 
So it's reflecting one, the kind of ground environment around the model, uh, and also it's going to reflect some of the highlight on the trim just below it. You'll see as it all builds up uh, that kind of highlight at the back on the trim. I think it, you can already see it's kind of bright, but it's got like little blobby parts on it and things. But though the brightness will line up with the big circular highlight on top of the shoulder pad. Uh, I mean, hopefully the, the painting is uh, kind of showing everything that you need uh, and I'm just waffling on, but the, uh, well, here you can see the Rhinox hide that I'm putting in. So again, I haven't used too much Rhinox hide. I used it a little bit on the hip plate as well. Uh, it's something more for the, the larger areas. The, it's pushing the contrast. So you see the darkest area now makes the bright highlight on, you know, the white highlight uh, makes it look brighter. In, with the contrast, so you know, light next to dark uh, pushes the, the shine element. But all these kind of layers I'm putting on, uh, you know, adding Rhinox hide, adding the uh, ice yellow and the white and things, the, the, you can't really see much yellow. Whereas if you look on the trim, you can see how yellow it was to start with, with just the it's a messy desert. So uh, again, that's one of the, the good points that. Uh, that I'm saving this section for last for showing you for when I get to the glazing uh, it'll show wh why it's necessary to glaze in the yellow and hopefully the, the trim section as well will just give you a little bit of an idea uh, so again the where it lines up and I, you know I can try and make things roughly line up um, you do like a bigger block and then as it fades out as it goes to the left and right uh, do more kind of little blocks slightly you know not quite as bright uh, so what you should find is that one layer of paint isn't completely opaque so you could do all the marks with one layer then uh, do a slightly smaller section with another layer it becomes slightly more opaque and then like a third layer should probably make it completely opaque something like that anyway um, and again, you're just using one color of paint there and you've got these transitions and all these different marks. And then if you need to at the very end, uh, you, again, you can just glaze over things just to neaten it up a bit if you want. Uh, so I was talking about the bounce highlight and this little bit that I'm putting in here uh, just shows the reflection from the trim, which is kind of reflecting off the, uh, off the trim onto the, the lower curve on the, you know, the, the the ball shape of the shoulder pad. I'll just keep going on uh, blending all these bits in with all these sort of scratchy marks. It works kind of like stippling. So, you know, with stippling, the closer you make the dots, uh, the more solid the, the color becomes. As you spread it out more, it works like shading, then the whiter the paper shows through. So it's exactly the same process with this, but using scribbly marks rather than dots. So for the back of the model here, uh, for completing the rest of it, I've already made this shoulder pad one of the brighter parts on it. So working from there, I'd probably make, you know, tone things down a little bit. Um, just you know, because the shoulder pads, they're, they're big and they're shiny, they're going to be quite uh, eye-catching. So now uh, we're going to add some of the, the yellow that I was talking about. As I said, Uriel yellow. It doesn't have to be Uriel, Uriel yellow. Uh, probably pick an easier one to say. Um, but you know, it's kind of like a, a nice rich yellow it's not the brightest it's a, a little bit darker um, but I wanted to show you how to make a glaze as well some people get a bit confused about glazes uh, they're, they're nothing special they're kind of like a wash it's very it's just, and you don't need to use any special mediums I'm just using water uh, most of the people that I know really just use water for uh, glazes you can get all sorts of things, you get glazed mediums, uh, whatever. It's just it's diluting the paint, uh, you know, so the pigment is spread out more in, in a medium. Um, but for the purposes of this, I'm glazing on, so it's a lot of water to a very small amount of paint. Uh, I'll say like seven parts water to one part paint. Each paint is different, you know, check it first. It's a very, very thin amount. You load up your brush and you rub it off on some kitchen roll or whatever it is that you want to rub it off on but you take most of the paint off because what you want to happen is you have complete control over the the paint as it hits the model and you're just adding like a subtle 
color change. So you can see it's very, very minor. Now, if you were doing a wash, when you, so you put a wash over this, and by wash, I don't mean like the Games Workshop official title wash, like a wash in general. It's just like a very runny paint. You just load it over, and what happens with a wash is it goes all into the recesses. You don't want that with this. This is to work really kind of like from the midtones into the shadows. Don't go over the very brightest highlights, the white area, because that will have a much stronger impact. It'll be it'll go yellow very, very quickly over the white. Just keep it kind of like on the edges of the midtones, um, kind of like the sort of edge of the Zemesi Desert sort of area going into the dark areas it just adds like that sort of hint of yellow now you can do this as much as you want if you find it's going too yellow get some Mornfang brown turn that into a wash do the same thing but anyway so that's the the end of this uh, video for showing you how to do the non-metallics you can see there I've just carried on the same process over the whole model as I've just showed you here so I, and you, I think you can see a bit more clearly so I've put some yellow glaze on various parts as well uh, but you know that's it. That's kind of like a like a beginner's guide on how to do non-metallic gold. And really, uh, you know, you could take that to a very high level if you wanted, and just spend a lot longer on it, uh, making it, you know, sort of perfect if you want. Um, but there will be a part two coming. Uh, I'm going to look at the kind of like the other parts of the model, so like the shiny sort of uh, steel bits, uh, his face, um, the, the blue shoulder pads, things like that. Uh, but anyway, that, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, also, I have a Patreon and uh, like my own personal website with like hundreds and hundreds of hours of videos um, where you can push your painting level a little bit higher if you want to take it up to things like, you know, display level or Golden Demon uh, painting competitions. But uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.